Hello and welcome to a short gearing guide for the warrior class in Terra. In this video I'll be focusing on playing a warrior as a damage dealer in PvE. While they have the versatility to tank as well, there hasn't been as much extensive testing for distance warrior, so I won't be diving into it to avoid spreading possibly false information. First things first, your weapon should only be equipped with one of two options, double enraged or double cooldown reduction. The first one gives you significantly more damage during enraged phases, while the other one further lowers the cooldowns for all skills in your arsenal, giving you an easier time managing them. If you only have 4 total rolls on your weapon, leave the flat 6% damage out. Unfortunately which setup gives better results varies on the boss you're fighting, your party composition and DPS, so usually you need to pick one or the other. For a weapon crystals, the standard DPS set is the way to go. Find pounding, focused, bitter and savage Niviots, giving you maximum damage while attacking from behind the boss. Secondly, depending on your weapon rolls, your chest armor should reflect this with one of two options. Blade draw cooldown reduction or blade draw damage. If you have a double enraged rolled on your weapon, go with blade draw cooldown reduction and vice versa. Any other options are suboptimal. For your armor crystals, four fine hardy Niviots is your only viable option, outside of specific bosses if you need to increase your HP with relentless Niviots. At least one glisteningly hardy Niviot is almost a must as it completely eliminates the need to use mana potions. For gloves and boots, the regular DPS rolls are your way to go. Crit factor, power and attack speed for gloves, and endurance, movement speed and mana regen for boots. Belt and brooch should have 6 crit factor and 3 power on both of them. 4 power on the circlet. Inner way should be some variant that gives you power. Once the weapon and armor are in order, all warriors should aim for one thing with the rest of their gearing. Hitting the crit cap of Scythe, as it is one of if not the only skill in the game which can reach a 100% critical hit chance. Once this cap is reached, all you should be worrying about is getting more power. Thankfully, raising set cap is easy in this current patch. Go all power set with your jewelry, rolling 4 endurance and 4% HP on earrings, 4 power on necklace and 4 crit factor and 4 power on rings. Add 4 powerful virsks on top of that. If you still have pieces of the old Heaven Spain or Keylock sets from the previous patch, using two rings of the resized variants along with the new stuff will give you slightly more power compared to a full set of new jewelry. Otherwise, just go with the full set of the new jewelry and you'll be just fine. With Assault Stance on, you should have a total of 159 crit factor. If you throw in Mystic Auras and Lambul Golgi, you should have a total of 241.4 crit factor or plus 189.4 depending on how you want to look at it. Just at Scythe's crit cap, outside of Harrowhold at least. However, if you're not using Lambul Golgi, just switch from Powerful to Kin Versus and you'll be good to go. Even after all of this, you should still keep two pieces of crit jewelry in reserve, just in case you'll be running with a priest, as they don't have anything to increase your crit factor with. One earring and ring should be fine, as long as you hit that all important plus 189 crit factor. In short, aim for plus 189 crit factor, including all your buffs from healers and consumables. After that, build power. Next up is etchings, and the most important ones by far are the ones for your weapon and gloves. Both should be energetic as they are the clear winner in effectiveness, giving you more attack speed and cooldown reduction. If you can't afford the tier 4 ones, you can get tier 2 and tier 3 ones with relative ease by grinding mid and high tier Island of Dawn bams respectively. For armor and boots, only grounded has any relevance, giving your defense a boost and potentially saving you in a pinch. With the latest patch, you can add one of three types of etchings for your jewelry and belt as well. Swift, keen or pumped, increasing your combat movement speed, crit factor and power respectively. These are tiers just like gear etchings and are mostly aimed for the utmost min-maxing. Warriors only benefit from pumped etchings as they should already have sufficient crit factor and don't do much with extra movement speed either. With this knowledge, you should be good to go. 
Of course, your gear is only a portion of your performance, as your skill as warrior will let you get the most out of your gear. A lot is dependent on your party composition too and their skills at their own classes. Still, practice makes perfect and now that you have the tools to perform, all that remains is to improve yourself in the game and climb your way to the top. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in game.